Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with the uh, yeah, world champion, IBO world champion yes. himself, Maxi Hughes. Yes. Guest commentator tonight. Mm. You're doing it all. The only thing you've not done is be a coach. Have you been a coach yet? Uh, in, no, in I the, did see that, yeah. Yeah, in the run-up to um, Reese and Will's fight, yeah, we've done some pads. But I need to work on that because <laughs> I hold the pads like I hold my guard and I was taking punches off. <laughs> You've got some guests, some nice gestures here from behind you, but... Uh, oh, look at that, look at that. You call yeah. me or him that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, you... I took a few punches um, during, during my coaching day, um, so I've got to work on that. That guy to my left, can he not teach you how to hold pads, no? <laughs> he just left us to it and let, us, let me wing it. <laughs> Fact, work, work it out for yourself. That's the best way. Maxi, were well, you here supporting the Leeds lads and stuff like uh, Our gym mate of yours as well made his debut in Wilharsen. Yeah. I mean... I mean, great night of boxing here in Leeds. Yeah, it's been good so far, and it was good to see like them kind gestures Daz Tetley's just give me. Um, you want to do it on camera? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm a bigger man than that. Uh, but Daz, Daz were one of my main sparring partners for my last fight against Strathon, and he helped me out massive. So you know, it was good to come and see Daz in his fight as well. So got some good young local talent on card. Go, go jump into you then, I mean, I think I've done a Zoom interview with you and you mentioned the uh, Haney fight and stuff like that, but obviously Jojo Diaz has come along. So what's next for you? When can we see you out? I think it, we'll hopefully see you out maybe beginning of 2022. Yeah, that's all I've been told, you know, obviously Haney were ducking me. <laughs> the way he's been ducking me is a disgrace. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that fight's been made, so I've just been put on... Um, all I've been told is I'll be out January, February, no, no date or opponent confirmed venue confirmed but you know i'm as, as you know i'm full-time proper boxer now um so we're about just, time yeah so we're just in gym working and you know it's time where the pressure's not on so we can practice things and work on things and just improve my craft all around so that's what we're doing just you, you're obviously you're joking there when haney was ducking you and stuff yeah. like that but that no, is that is he's not joking <laughs> listen at some point they've got to fight him He's there now. Sean, Sean, I'll come, we'll, we'll, I want to do an interview with you. I want to do an interview with you on loan so you can talk about this. I want, to, I want Sean O'Hagan by himself talking shit. That's what I want. Until then, I'll get you after Maxi. Maxi. Yeah. <laughs> I love Sean. Uh, yeah, that's a fight that you want. It's a fight that you, you were hoping could be made because even though you are IBO world champion and stuff like that, it's a bargaining tool to get into these big fights. Yeah, yeah. And being that you're both with Eddie Hearn and stuff like that, I mean, it, it, it made sense in your eyes, didn't it? Absolutely, yeah. His dad had mentioned it. His, they'd obviously watched my fight and his dad had given me some credit and said that it's a fight that they'd like. They'd like to fight for the IBO. So, no, obviously I, I want his WBC. So, it's, it was sort of on the horizon. Um, I was put on the shortlist for that fight. You know, they went with Diaz. Fair enough, Diaz is a bigger name in America. Former IBF Super Featherweight Champion. So, but what, what the positive I've took out of this is I'm on that list. Um, you know your name. Yeah, you? as long as I keep winning, um, keep defending my title, I can't be denied. You know, I'm going up in the rankings across the other sanctioning bodies. I think I'm in the top 15 with the WBC, IBF, possibly WBA as well. So as long as I keep doing my thing, um, I can't be denied. You know, as long as I keep winning, my time will come. Hopefully that will be next year. Um, them two, them fights aren't that far away. So as long as I keep winning, them fights are there, and they're there, and I'm gonna fucking take them. <laughs> <laughs> like you say, all you can do is keep winning and that. But I like your story because I like the fact that you nearly gave up the sport. Yeah. Imagine if you did. It could have been when you're 56 year old looking back and being like, I could have, if I could have, wanna, you know, all that nonsense. And you stuck in there. And now look at you, man. You're in a three-piece suit, a Gucci suit. What is it? Was it Gucci Armani? What is it? Darcy. So thanks, Mark Darcy. Darcy, see you later, pal. Well done, mate. Uh, so yeah, thank you to Mark Darcy for kicking me out. Um, where's the lo where's the logo? Logo's here. Look, Mark Darcy. Yes. Look at that. Thank you, Mark Darcy. So. Um, yeah, life's good at the minute. I've got your, your nose. Like, <laughs> Fucking hell. It's not, it's not hard to miss that, is it? Big, big nose on my skin. Yeah. I mean, you're doing it. You're, you're glad you're stuck in. Absolutely, yeah. If you know, if in years to come, if I'd have packed in and went to see you like Mystic Meg and she yeah. said, you know, if you stuck at this and this would have happened, I'd have been filming, like, but, you know. It's, boxing is a short period of time in your life, so that's that's ultimately what made me carry on. I was 28 at the time, and I thought, 
I've surely got to be able to win, you know, some sort of domestic title, and you know, they've done that, and I've won one bigger, and I now look at the fights that I'm being considered, talked about, um, the them world champions know who I am, I'm on their radar, so you know, good things have come from sticking at it. Do you think the Haney fight will happen? Uh, in your heart of hearts, obviously, Haney's out there. He's, he's called for Teofimo. Eddie Hearn's talking about the Teofimo fight being next because the fights are a week apart. One's on the 27th, one's on the 4th of December. The talk Eddie Hearn has said, I, I was out in Vegas then, he said that he will pay for the fight. He will pay, If Bob doesn't want the fight, he'll pay for it. Let's get the fight on. It needs to happen, stuff like that. But you, you're hopeful. Do you believe that these big guys, the Teofimo Lopez's and the Haney's, you will get to face them at some stage in your career? I'm hoping so, yeah, but I've, I've also, you know, I saw I saw that interview that um, they obviously want to fight. It's all just taught they've obviously both got to come through the fights. I've also seen that um, Lopez has been calling Josh out, hasn't he? Mm. Stepping up away and fighting Josh. Um, Thoughts on that quickly? He's, he's good, Lopez has done well, but he, he won't beat Josh. I can't see anybody beating Josh at the minute. And, and like Josh's aspirations are to defend his belts against Catrol. And he's got uh, aspirations of moving up away and clearing up that division as well. So, you know, are, are, they, are, they, are they all going to move up and are the belts going to become vacant? I don't know. Um, no, if they do come through the fight, there's going to be obviously a lot of politics involved. So, I just don't know. I really, you know, I don't know that much about making them fights. But hopefully, you know, if Haney comes through, Lopez moves up get a fight for a vacant belt or if Haney does say right Maxi I will fight you now I'll, I'll take that fight definitely so it's just a matter of biding us time now and, and seeing what does happen between them fights once they've come through their fights when you but when you look at the Haney Teofimo Lopez fight I mean you've got two great young champions Haney is doing all right things undefeated yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a great, great fighter. Teofimo Lopez, young, and he's a great fighter too, man. Right now, they're, they're both doing the right things. Yeah. They're in the same division. The fights make sense, yeah. doesn't it? So, when you look at that fight, how do you see it? You know, as a boxing fan, you want to see that fight. You want to see the undisputed. Um, so, if I see that fight, it is a good fight, and I, I slightly fancy Lopez to come through with that fight. Um, obviously, he's riding high from beating Lomachenko which nobody expected him to do um, he, he showed a different side to his game he was a bit of a puncher aggressive he was smashing everybody but he showed against Lomachenko who is a superior technician usually to most um, he, he outboxed him and he outpatiented him so he showed another side to his game that he's not just a knockout artist he showed he can box so uh, you know, I, he's obviously got most of the belts in the division, so I, I believe, you know, put him up there as number one and believe he'll beat, if they fought Haney, I think he'd beat Haney. Is it, are you going off the last two performances, the Lauren Harris fight for Haney and the Loma fight for Lopez? Is that sort of like, a lot of fans are looking at them, those last two performances and saying Teo will beat Haney, but Haney is... I mean, like I, 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 I've seen him. I've seen him train and stuff like. He's, he's and he's working obviously with Ben Davidson and stuff like. Tio Fimo Lopez. I've seen him train as well. I mean, it's a great, great fight. It's it's one that we we should, should definitely should see. But jumping back to to Maxi Hughes, man. I mean, what's it like being a full time boxer, man? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, you know, enough time. It's the recovery time, the main thing. Which which while I'm working, which with the hard bit, you know, I do a good session at night and then I'd be up and at work and I'm thinking. You know, on my break, I'd look at other lads, and other boxers, what they're doing, and I think, I wish I was just off. Mm. Just have an hour on settee or something like that, and I'm fucking painting these walls. You're not bored, you're not bored, no? <laughs> no, 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 there's plenty. I mean, I, you know, I've got a new a newborn, I've got four week old at home as well, so aside from training and stuff like that, you know, I'm helping my wife. Pass. As as yeah, she's, look, luckily, she's breastfeeding her, so... She still gets me up in night and I'll still try and do my bit. I'll get up, I'll pass her, pass her the baby and she'll right, I've fed her now, can you burp her? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. I need to get that, I need to work on that. Every time I pat her on back, because all my, all my t-shirts at home have the white sick there. <laughs> so uh, I need to work on that, yeah. So um, yeah, life, life's good, I'm enjoying it. Full-time boxer, full-time dad. Uh, dad of two girls now, so I'm, I'm busy, I'm a busy man. Definitely. Well, listen, enjoy the fights. I think there's a couple more fights. Jack Bateson's uh, going for his first major title in the English title yeah. in uh, about half an hour's time, so go out and enjoy that. And uh, listen, the suit, man, 
<laughs> being, a, being a world champion has changed you, you mate. Apart, you, you've changed. Like you've changed. You look like a world champion. <laughs> Say that again. Yeah, look like a world champion. There you go, Maxie. Maxie, thank you so much for doing, doing this FIFO TV and uh, no doubt I'll probably catch you in a Zoom interview sometime. Yes, definitely. Let's catch you soon, mate. Cheers, Maxie. Thank you.